All right, guys, so here we are one last time for this particular assignment. What we're going to be looking at is the last section, sum and product of rational and irrational numbers. First things to remember, a rational number is, so a rational number, is a number that can be written as a fraction or ratio. I like to stress the fraction part. Now, this includes things like one-fourth, three-eighths, one-third. 0.25 is okay because 0.25 could be written as a fraction. And it winds up working out 0.25. Think about it. It's a quarter, one-fourth. So we can have decimals. We can have whole numbers because I could take like the number four and say that's actually four over one. Another thing that a lot of people forget about is we can have repeating decimals. So like one third, well, one third, if you guys should know by now, or you can check it on a calculator, it's 0.3 repeating. It's allowed to go on forever because we can still put it as a fraction. Irrational numbers are numbers that can not be written as fractions. So, There's a lot of examples of them, but they're all kind of similar. So for example, pi, it goes on and on and on and on forever. It cannot be made into a frac, or sorry, it goes on and on forever. It does not repeat. It does not use the same pattern. It cannot be made into a fraction. It is what it is. Something like root two is also a irrational number. Root three is an irrational number, but root four is not an irrational number. Root four is actually rational. Because if you take root four, the square root of four, that's a two. Two it can be made into a fraction, so two is an irrational number. So when we look at these, we're gonna do our multiplication or addition like we've done in the past. If it's rational, we're good, we're done, we say it's rational. If it's irrational, we say so. So, first problem, for example. And you can simplify these ahead of time if you can spot away. So, find the product of 4 root 3 and root 26. Well, 4 root 3 times root 26. Well, okay, I know that'll be 4 root, and then I go, what's 3 times 26? That's 78, I think? Yeah, that's totally 78. And I go, is 78 a rational number? And I try to think what could multiply to make 78. And so like, can I divide it by 64? No, that's a decimal. 49, no, 20, or after 49 comes 36. Um, 36, no, that that's... 36 two times 2 would be 72, so no. Um, 25? No, nope, not quite there. Um, what about... Oh, what are our other options? 16. Um, can we divide this by 16? I don't think so, but if I don't check, I won't know. So real quick, 78. Oops, never happened, guys. And if you have a calculator, go ahead and grab your calculator and do this. So 16, 78, that is so not helpful, that angle. Also, I wrote that as a radical, not as a division sign. All right, so 16 times five is 80. Okay, so yeah, it's not gonna be 16. So I keep going down the list. Doesn't divide by nine, doesn't div divide by four. Nope, doesn't divide by four, so it's, it's done. It doesn't have anything, it's just root 78. So I have four root 78 as my answer. So that four root 78, that's my answer. That's just what I'm gonna put in. So I hit the four. Punch the root symbol, I write 78. This result is irrational because it contains root 78. As soon as that root 78 is in it, 
I, I, I can't. I'm done. And it, so because it cannot be written as a ratio of two numbers or two integers, it can't be written as a fraction. And its decimal expansion does not terminate or repeat. It just goes on and on and on and on forever. So that's not terminating. And it doesn't repeat. It uses different patterns all the time. So that's it. Done. Submit next. Yay, got it right. New problem. So, four root, what, find the product of four root 14 and three root 12, or three root 2, in simplest form. So, product, again, I'm multiplying. So, four root 14, nothing to do there just yet, times three root 2. I'm going to wind up with 12 root 28, which I know will be, oops, 12 root, and 28 can be 4 times 7, and 4 is a perfect square. So 12 times 2 times root 7, or 24 root 7. Because it contains that root 7, it's going to be irrational. 24 square root 7. The result is irrational, cannot be written as a fraction, and it does not terminate or repeat. Submit, yes, good, done. New problem. Okay. So, this shows one of the things that comes up sometimes. And this can actually be really, 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 really hard. Or really easy. I'm going to try to show you the way that makes it easy. Now, before I even tackle this problem, I want you guys to think about root 3 times root 3. The answer here is 3. Here is why. If I do root 3 times root 3, we'd get root 9. The square root of 9 we know is 3. We could also say that it is the square root of 3 squared. Square roots and squares are opposites, so they could even be said to cancel, giving me my 3. This is relevant because they're asking me to find a product of 4 root 14 and 4 root 14. When I multiply root 14 times root 14, I don't know what 14 times 14 is off the top of my head, 196. Okay, I guess I do. But uh, root 14 times root 14, that's going to cancel the root. I'm just going to have 14. So that's going to be an awesome little trick to save me some time. So 4 root 14 times 4 root 14. This only works when they're exact same numbers. So 4 times 4 is going to be 16. And root 14 times root 14, as I said earlier, is just going to give me 14. And I go, hey, what's 16 times 14? Well, that equals... Oops. 16 times 14. Well, that's 24. Okay. All right, 64, duh. And 0, 16. That is going to be 2, or no. Yep, 224. So, boom, boom. Unless I messed up my multiplication, we have 224 as our answer. So the result is 224. The result is rational because 224 could be a fraction. It does not contain a radical. It can be written as a ratio or fraction, and it does terminate. Submit. Yes. Great. I'm having a good day. New problem. Uh, we've done a lot of products, so I'm going to keep skipping until we have a sum. Okay. Now, you guys may remember back in the day real quick. Short version. If I do 3x plus 2x, I can just say that's 5x, right? If I do 3x plus 2y, that's nothing really. That's 3x plus 2y. You guys may remember when we did exponent stuff. 5 squared times 5 to the 4th. We just combined the exponents because the bases were the same. And we got 5 to the 6th. No big deal. But if we had like 5 squared times 3 to the 4th, that was nothing. We just left that alone. If our radical 
what's underneath the root is the same, we can combine them. If it's different, we can't. So what I'm going to do is just try to simplify real quick. And when I'm done simplifying, if what I have under the radical is the same and under both radicals, they can combine, they can add. If they're not the same, they can't add. Because that's like trying to add x's and y's. So, 3 root 20, okay, we all know root 25 is going to be 5, plus 3 root 6. Well, there's nothing to be done with root 6. Root 25, we just said is 20, or 5, so 3 times 5, plus 3 root 6. 15 plus 3 root 6. That's, that's what I got. There's nothing else that I can do here. So I'm going to go over to this. And when I'm here, I'm just going to go, okay, it is 15 plus 3. Hit that root button, punch in a 6. The result is irrational. My answer contains a radical. It's irrational. Because it cannot be written as a ratio or fraction, and it does not terminate or repeat. Submit answer. Yes. Beautiful. Done. If the radicals canceled entirely, or they had the same radical, we would have added them. So this was not the problem, but for example, if it said 15 root 6 plus 3 root 6, I would have said 18 root 6. Because they'd have the same radicals, they could combine. Alright, that's about that. Good luck guys, be well. Remember if you have questions, contact us. Me or Mr. Tibbetts. For those of you that are Mr. Tibbetts, reach out to him if you need to. For those of you that me, just you guys know, email, Google Voice. We have our drop-in tutorings on Wednesday. You're not alone. You can do this. Get it done. Be well, guys.